um, because I have uh, bananas like the one here behind me or because I raise macadamia nuts in the yard and so on, um, people often believe that uh, I like to push the envelope uh, with plants or push the margin. Actually, my mission as a gardener and a horticulturalist is to push the envelope of our belief system, not the plants. No, envelope, and that if it takes too much uh, climatic modification, if I have to mess around with a piece of plant material too much to grow it in my garden without uh, trouble, stress, strain, uh, I'm not interested. It's that simple. The plants either have to take the conditions as they are, or if they can't take a joke, they're out of the garden. Uh, my knowledge is built on the bodies of all the dead plants I've put in that couldn't take the conditions here in California. Sometimes, uh, because it's an exploring process, uh, I end up with uh, bananas. Okay, I, Ten years, fifteen years ago, if you'd asked my professional opinion about raising bananas in the Bay Area, I'd have said, nah, I don't think so. You know, or go back 20 years, and if you'd asked me, could you raise macadamia nuts here in the Bay Area, I probably wouldn't have believed you. Uh, yet, I find both of these crops really easy to grow. So, again, to make it clear, if it doesn't work outside here in my garden with only minimal care uh, in typical gardening practices, uh, it's gone and I'm not interested in it. Uh, if it does survive, then uh, sometimes we expand our understanding of where plants will grow. Uh, on the other hand, though, I actually do, in my little unheated greenhouse over here, have some vegetation that uh, wouldn't survive outdoors in my yard. But because it seems to survive nicely in my unheated greenhouse, um, I let it be. Uh, I, We'll go on in there and I'll show you some of the exceptions to Bill's gardening rule. Here we are uh, inside the greenhouse. Uh, up over my shoulder, right here on the top shelf, you'll see that I actually have a pineapple growing in a one-gallon container over here. Uh, right next to it there is an orchid cactus flower. So the pineapple is uh, one of the crops that there's no way I can raise these outdoors here. I've tried in the past. Um, I've come fairly close too. Uh, I remember one year I had these uh, in five gallon pots out in the yard. Uh, they were softball sized pineapples on top and I was getting very cocky and decided yes I can do this here outside in California. And then we got one cold snap and uh, they all turned into gray mush and died. And uh, so. I almost said the heck with pineapples if they can't take a joke around here, but I realized that the plants will actually grow in very small containers. This one here is in a one gallon nursery pot, and because they'll do that, and I have some space in the unheated greenhouse, I have mercy on them and I allow them to grow in here. They actually do quite well. Uh, this is a cold resistant uh, white pineapple variety from the east side of the big island of Hawaii. Uh, you can actually bring these home with you. The Department of Agriculture in Hawaii will allow you to take uh, pineapples off the island with no paperwork, nothing special. They pass quarantine because they they're too acid to carry fruit flies is the issue. So these are tops actually that came off the white pineapples in my garden over by Hilo and I brought them back here to Fremont. Uh, these are some fresh ones here in one gallon pots. Eh, it takes probably about 18 months to get the plants up to size in here. Now remember there's no artificial heating. This is a solar greenhouse and so it's an unheated. Uh, it's about 18 months then they'll begin to flower and it takes uh, we probably another 8 to 12 months in here for the pineapples to ripen out. But it does work and it's not a big strain on me so I let it happen. Uh, right over here this is a coffee plant. Uh, let's see coffee arabica um, Kona typica. The seed for the plant actually uh, came off the coffee bushes in my backyard over by Hilo. Uh, brought them home here to Fremont and planted them and they've actually been again carefree in an unheated greenhouse. Coffee is a fairly small plant and so it will fit in a greenhouse well. 
uh, like the pineapple, it can be grown in relatively small containers. Uh, this guy here is in a, a five-gallon nursery pot. Uh, it's not a very big container, really. takes up very little space over here in the corner of my greenhouse, and so it's allowed to survive. It's a pet coffee. Um, we're actually now in the fourth year on this one being around, and I think I'm starting to get enough coffee fruit on the thing to uh, w wonder, you know, if it isn't worthwhile having it around. There's, there's quite a bit of coffee hanging in this plant. It's doing well here, and it uh, it's doing well with uh, casual neglect, I'm using an acid potting soil uh, with acid organic fertilizers to raise it. Every once in a while I get a few bugs on the plant scale and such. Uh, but again, like the pineapples, it'll grow in here in small containers and the plants are of small stature. Uh, that's the key when you're talking about growing tropicals or subtropicals in areas where you have to use greenhouse and protection to grow them. Um, th there really is no point in starting off uh, trying to grow mango trees or trying to grow macadamia nut trees or something that gets huge, uh, really, you know, has a big spread and will cause you great big problems. I would suggest that you look for crops that are smaller in stature naturally, crops that will grow in fairly small containers, and so then you, you might succeed at what you're trying to do. Uh, right here, next to the pineapples, I have uh, two. Uh, yellow dragon fruit in pots. This is the uh, Selenocereus megalanthus. Uh, these are not quite the same as the red and pink dragon fruits you're familiar with. Uh, those are uh, uh, Hylocereus, uh, usually hybrids, or Hylocereus undatus, or some combination of different Hylocereus cactus. Um, these will have small spines on the fruit that have to be swept off, but the flesh is so much better than the uh, red dragon fruits we're used to seeing. Uh, these are, again, another plant that it's possible that you could grow it inside a greenhouse. Over here on this side of the greenhouse, I have an older one in a five-gallon pot. It's beginning to uh, scramble. Pretty soon it's going to climb to the peak of this place. They're uh, controllable. They can be pruned heavily, uh, like peach trees. They fruit mostly on second year growth. So it's possible to keep these cut down to size and to uh, raise them inside greenhouses. Um, over here are some anonas growing. Uh, this group is Chirimoya seedlings. Um, a lot of the anonas are relatively small trees, could be cut to bushes. And so if you're thinking about trying to plant a tropical fruit you know, inside a greenhouse, you might want to think about uh, trying a cherimoya. That's a, a pretty good choice. A cherimoya is relatively hardy. I can grow it outdoors here in Fremont. Um, they require hand pollination, uh, which is kind of a bugger. And it's one of the biggest reasons that I'm not too excited about them. It's more work uh, than I'm willing to go through. But... Because they have to be hand pollinated, uh, whether they're indoors or outdoors, so pollinating them in the greenhouse is the same as if you had them in the garden. Um, these will take temperatures uh, a little bit below freezing without killing them off, so they're hardy enough to be used uh, in in cool greenhouses, say in Pacific Northwest or some place like that. And I really believe it uh, that you could probably grow these things in Seattle indoors if you wanted to. Many of the avocado varieties grow pretty well here in the Bay Area uh, outdoors, so I, I, I don't go to a lot of extremes when it comes to fruiting avocados here. But not everybody in the U.S. is as lucky as we are, uh, and so not everybody can have avocado trees right in their backyard. Uh, so if you'd like to try raising an avocado, in a cold climate by using a greenhouse, you might want to consider this little guy over here. This is called Holiday. Um, Holiday is a short little cotto. You see here's one of the tallest branches in my plant and it barely comes up to my chin. Uh, the thing crawls all over the place almost like creeping rosemary. It requires a good stake to hold it up so it does get fairly wide. But this is a uh, short plant. It's an avocado plant that could be raised in uh, uh, greenhouses in more northerly type climates. Than the it's hardy. It grows outdoors here in the Bay Area with no problem, no matter how cold the winter seems to get. 
and so I suppose in a greenhouse you might be able to raise it easily as far north as Seattle maybe. So I guess that right there is about the short and skinny of it. Um, you see all these unusual plants that I'm raising here in my garden in California. They do grow outdoors here uh, without, again, extreme attention from me. I do not cover my bananas or my macadamia nuts. I don't hang Christmas tree lights on anything. Um, if these plants cannot survive within the climate and come back again in the spring to continue growing, then I simply won't grow them. So that's the short and simple of my philosophy on gardening. It's a permaculture approach. Too much input to anything, as far as I'm concerned, is a counterproductive thing. It doesn't fit into my program, although I know there are a lot of people out there that uh, would just give their eye teeth to grow their own mango in Nome, Alaska. And, you know, if that's the kind of approach you like, the space station gardening, I call it, you know, to take a plant so far out of its environment uh, uh, that you, you know, you literally have to um, create an atmosphere for it uh, artificially and, you know it's fun you can do it it's technological and so on um, I more believe in just utilizing your natural microclimates in a landscape uh, and then again breaking the mindset these bananas behind me these bananas will grow here in my garden in Fremont they just will we didn't believe they would even I didn't believe they would uh, you know decade and a half or so ago. Uh, same thing with the mac nuts. Uh, there's other things like mandarin oranges, for instance. So, you know, if, if you're living up in Minnesota and you're looking at this tree and you're going, oh man, I love to have a satsuma mandarin growing in my garden. Uh, well, you might be able to do it if you're using a greenhouse. Otherwise, you have to live in California. But the point being is there was a guy once who put the first Satsuma Mandarin into the ground here in Fremont and wasn't 100% certain how well the plant would grow. These grow like weeds here, and so I just absolutely love to grow mandarins here. And this is my mindset on gardening. If I have to do anything more than fertilize this tree, see that the tree gets enough water when it's dry, and watch out for insects and pests in the tree, that's my limit. Okay? Picking is the only other piece of work and a bit of pruning that I'll put on these plants. If I had to come out here and put a bed sheet over the top of this thing every time it got cold, this would be a stump. I'd make firewood out of it and I'd replace it with a pear because I was in the wrong place for growing mandarins. But I do have coffee and pineapples inside my greenhouse that wouldn't grow outdoors. And so for the indoor culture, some plants, like those coffee and pineapples, will grow indoors here as easily as they would grow outdoors if I was in Hawaii or some more suitable climate for them. In that case, I let them happen. But they're pretty much taking care of themselves or else. Thanks a lot. Uh -huh.